an ice cream parlor raised its wages. And I, I just have to kind of bring you this story because it's astounding to me just how awesome it, it really is, right? Because I do not know why it does that. Like, honestly, this microphone pisses me off sometimes. But it's a it's an incredible... I'm going to... All right, it's oh that sounds better, way better. It's an incredible thing, right? So, uh, the the conserv there, there's an argument in in, in uh, the media right now that because the employment rate went the I wish the unemployment rate went from six percent to six point one percent. Oh my God, the work ethic, the American work ethic is dying. Oh my God, Jesus Christ, we are. Oh my God, is the American work ethic dead? Are people just not wanting to work? And what that means is the language is from uh, Michael Smirconish and Anderson Cooper and all these people, Rachel Maddow. Oh, my God. Are you guys lazy or something? Do you guys not want to go to work? And, you know, they're acting as though people are like, I don't want to work anymore. I don't want to work anymore. I'm just going to go to the beach in L.A., in Venice, and I'm just going to sip a pina colada. Do you like pina colada? I should not sing. But anyway... (laughs) That's what they're acting like. They're acting like, oh my God, everybody's just taking the time off. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Oh, this is so bad. So an ice cream parlor, as I said, raised its wages. So it's a it's in Pittsburgh, okay? And uh, they they raised their wages to $15 an hour. Now, I don't know what their wage was before. It could have been 13, 14, even almost 15. It could have been 12. It could have been 10, 7, 6, or not 6, <laughs> 11. I don't know. But the 9, whatever. The point is they raised their wages to 15 bucks an hour. And you know what happened after they raised their wages to 15 bucks an hour? They got a thousand applications. A thousand. A thousand applications. So... This kind of proves two points. Number one is if you give people a situation that they're going to – that that you got to give people a situation that's going to make them want to work. And if you do that, they're going to they're gonna want to go to work. So you raise their wages, they're going to they're gonna work. And I've said that a billion times on this channel, 100,000 times. Raise people's wages. Not only would it help them, but it would help businesses because now people are going to want to go back to work. Because they're being paid more, they're receiving more benefits. Now, another narrative that uh, uh, a, a narrative that this beats, right, is from the Republicans' hockey points. They now look. MSNBC did this. MSDNC, anyway, because uh, uh, they're in the, po- in the pocket of the Democratic establishment, the Democratic Party. Okay, anyway, <laughs> I have to say that all the time, so you know that. Stephanie Rule did this, and you got to give her a little bit of credit, not too much. I've criticized her before. You know, she said that a Republican talking point is, oh, my God, no, oh, they, they always mention that little corner shop, your family pizza place, you know, oh, the ice cream parlor, oh, my God, there's no way, no way, oh, my God, there's no way they'll be able to pay the minimum wage, oh, my God, poor ice cream shop owner, and the owner is like, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, we can pay the minimum wage, and in fact, we're going to do the minimum wage. And by the way, they, this is in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. They live in Pittsburgh. It's a medium to small city. It, uh, the, re, it, the cost of living is reasonable kind of thing, and, and I guess. And so it's not like, oh, my God, New York City or L.A. type of uh, 15 bucks an hour. It's there where it's a manageable cost of living right now, manageable in certain terms, not all terms, right? So, um, you know, that it proves that. And, it, and not only that. But the ice cream parlor shop says, uh, owner says, well, now that I've raised the wages, I've now got a thousand applications. And he stopped counting after one week, by the way. So it really sounds like the American work ethic is dying, according to the corporate media. But it, it actually kind of, you know, he's saying, well, not only did I raise the wages, but now I've got a larger pool of applicants to pick from. Right? And you can say, Jason, it's just a freaking ice cream shop. What the, what the hell? <laughs> Some ice cream shops make their ice cream in this country, especially the small ones. They make their own ice cream. So you got to have skill. So this also comes to another thing, which is you look at 2020 and, you know, so so the, the first thing is, um, you know, you got 2020 where you had people coming in 
uh, you know, and and working their asses off for little benefits, very little wages, and and nothing else. And meanwhile, CEOs were making hundreds of billions of dollars just off of our labor, uh, off of all the essential workers' labor. And people got laid off. Yet the CEOs still made bank, a whole lot of money. So they did very well for themselves, right? They did incredibly well. But then they, everyone questions when everybody else gets, I don't know, unemployment insurance or uh, stimulus checks or, or child tax credits, whatever it is, uh, PPP loans. Yeah, there's corruption there too. But anyway, whenever they do, everybody complains. Oh my God, you're giving too much away. What they wanted and what, what, what the corporate media wants these days and for the, what the CEOs do want and the corporate media pushes this shit is for you to go back to work, for people to go back to these shitty ass jobs with horrible wages and to say, we want you to come back, risk your fucking life. No, we're not going to give you wages that are high enough. We're not going to give you any benefits. We're not going to make it safe for you. We're not going to do anything to thank you and pay you for your labor. But we want you to come back and risk your life and make us a bunch of money and you little money. And we want you to work three jobs and kill yourself and go bankrupt because you don't have the money because we won't pay you any wages. That's exactly what, what, they're, what they're thinking. Now, that's ridiculous because, right, to me and you, that sounds ridiculous. To them, it's like, oh, this this, this, this normal position. Now... Fox News segments, especially day after day after day, are like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. You're paying people way too much money between the stimulus checks and the $3,600 child tax credit and the $3,000 tax credit and the child tax credit and the unemployment insurance and this and that. You're paying people way too much. It's it's, it's honestly, you're, you're really overdoing it here. You're paying them way too much. This is not okay. It needs to stop. And you know what they did to stop it? 21 states, all Republicans. All Republicans got rid of the unemployment benefits. All of them. Every single fucking one. All Republican governors said, fuck your benefits. We're out. No more. So, interesting, right? And because they think that the duh position in in corporate media, I was about to say Hollywood, possibly Hollywood too, but they think the duh position is, oh, well, you need to take away all the benefits. Gone. Gone. Gone just out take away all the benefits they don't need them it's all good that's what they think that's the duh position and when you go against that narrative like i'm doing on this channel they think you're freaking crazy They're like what the hell what's wrong with you seriously what the what's wrong with you right and you know i i see this day after day after day oh why are we gonna raise the minimum wage all this they forget my fries they forget my burger you go ahead and do that job for a low ass wage for little benefits and you tell me you wouldn't be overstressed. Tell me. So, you know, I, I, I love this. And this also kind of goes um, with the hypocrisy of the Republican Party. Now, look, you got the corporate Democrats who are just absolutely awful. They haven't passed the minimum wage. And, oh, it's coming. It's coming. When the fuck is it coming? Uh, when? In 2025? Anyway. But you've got Republicans who say, oh, my God, you're in the land of the free and you're free in America. But you got to have the freedom, the actual meaningful freedom, because here's why I think it's good to have benefits. Oh, but people are lazy. I don't want to pay for people who are lazy. Well, I don't want to pay for your jackass, your dumbass. OK, there. Well, if you give people benefits, it gives people a chance to actually think and have a monthly income and say, Maybe I don't want to be a part of this damn job. Maybe I want to be paid like a decent wage. Maybe I don't want to work at some shitty ass job for some shitty ass benefits and, and, and little anything. You know, maybe I want to do something meaningful while I have my limited time on this planet, with my limited time on this planet. Maybe I want to do something good for the community. Maybe I want to make a little money for myself, a little bit more money for myself and put money in my family's pockets and the community's pockets too. And so, you know, you hear my sister in the background, but you, you, do, you, you get a lot of that. That's why I think it's good to have benefits. One of my last points, you know, the, the, this whole wage thing, it's kind of like chattel slavery, uh, slavery, slavery. It's like slavery because, you, yeah, you're not being owned as a human, but technically 
You know, like, what's the difference between owning a car, leasing a car, leasing a car, renting a car, owning a home, renting a home? You're just renting your labor out to all these corporations on the mar- in the labor market for nothing. And people don't want to go back to that. People are saying, you know what? If this is the way it's going to be, I'm going to go to another sector because I don't want these low wage jobs. I don't want to be there. And by the way, they held these people up as the heroes. Oh, my God, there are our essential workers and they're heroes. But we're not going to pay you another fucking dime. That's for sure. We're not going to keep you safe. Now, last point is, you know, they uh, haven't done this kind of format in a while. They're, they're always saying, like I said, the land of the free. And, and that's where I think the benefits are good because you could get your, you have the freedom to think for yourself and think what you want to do and if you want to go back to those crappy jobs. But Republicans talk about they want you to have the freedom to make a choice, state choice, personal choice. And one of their biggest things is, oh, we uh, want big government out of everybody's business. Hey, but when it comes to a woman's body, we want to make sure that the government is all there. Hey, you know, all of that, right? And then... um. You know, so they're the family of uh, par- the party of family values, right? That's apparently what they say, and they always say, "Well, we want women to, we want parents, especially women, more generically, right, to stay in general, to stay home with their kids." But then they're the first ones to deny you maternity leave, paternity leave, medical leave, family leave. You know, you know, paid vacation time. They're the ones who put in this right to work shit. In their laws, they're the ones who put work requirements in benefits. Like, are you serious? So they're hypocritical. They're they're nothing but hypocrites, and we all know that. And you know, this is just another way of Fox News and all of them making dicks of themselves. <laughs>